Welcome to CSSE 1001 and 7030, Assignment 1, sorry, Assignment 3, Semester 1, 2018. Having a quick look at what we are doing this assignment, we're going to be making a game where, like, tower defense, you'll be using GUIs, classes, and a whole bunch of support code. Just starting off this video, make sure you re-download a3files.zip. We have updated some support code as well as made comments clearer. And if there was any bugs that we found along the past week, we've updated them. So make sure you re-download support files as of 18th of May. Okay, going to the task, we have a different structure from previous sections, right? We have task one, task two, task three. Keep in mind, postgraduates, you also have independent research. So task one is just basic features. It's just making sure your game runs and there's basic functionality there. Task two builds off it, and so does task three. Tutors will give you a lot of help and direction for task one, a bit of direction for task two, and we'll leave it up to you for task three. In task one, you get quite a lot of the marks, and it's fairly simpler in comparison to task two and task three. So having a look at the mark breakdown, of course, as always, we'll be marking code quality. It's, at, it's the most important thing as a programmer to make sure your code is documented, your code is simple, and you're using the correct structures. You're not overcomplicating things. And also another thing to note, functionality will be marked based on tutors playing your game rather than having automated tests. Okay, into the game. So having a look at the game, this is what the game should look like once you finish task one, right? 4.1 is going to be this app class, which all it is is make sure your little window gets popped up, this little canvas guy, right? Task 4.2 is tower placement, and this is broken down into three sections. When I place a tower, that's when I left click, I should be able to place a tower. Like I've just bought a tower, right? Second section is also when you move your mouse over the canvas, your tower should be moving with your mouse, and you should see this preview line change. This is the path the enemies will take, right? And the last thing is when you move your mouse off the canvas, your preview line and your like little um, tower should be disappearing. Finally, I forgot to mention in the preview, if it's not allowed, for example, I'm blocking the path for enemies, then it'll give me an X, right? So just to clarify, this is what it looks like. It follows that path. Cool. Have a look at the status bar class. Have a read of this guy. This guy's quite helpful, gives you a lot of hints. But make sure you make a class named status bar, which inherits from tk.frame. If you're not sure what we're talking about inheriting from tk.frame, Try and do GUI Tutorial 2 and 1. That will give you a lot of help, especially with GUI Tutorial 2. You'll notice we're making a class and inheriting from tk.frame. What this status bar class looks like is this grey guy at the very top of your screen. So it's like wave, your score, your coins, and your lives. Alright. Um, there's a certain format. Make sure you have your images, and they should be updating every time you play this game. For example, I click next wave, my wave increases. Every time I kill an enemy, my score should increase. Um, my coins should decrease and you should lose life. That kind of stuff. Second last thing is the file menu and dialogues. So what we mean by file menu and dialogues is this guy up here, the file menu. When you click it, you should be able to see a new game, which makes a new game. And exit, which should ask you, are you sure you want to exit? Okay. Which should delete the pop-up and cancel and you just go back to the normal game view. Keep in mind for Mac that this will appear on the top where your global menu bar should be. And yeah. Last thing is the play controls. The play controls is down here in the next wave and play. So the next wave just cues the next wave along. And this play pause is that when you hit the pause, the game pauses and you can see that text changed. 
So add a frame to the right of game view below status bar, then add a button to the frame. Again, have a read of this, it's very helpful. Hopefully that's made task one clearer. Good luck. See you next time for task two and task three overview, but hopefully this has helped. Make sure to start early.